What's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Detective Walton. How are you? I'm good. In today's episode, I wanted to talk about how not every rule applies to you all the time. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now, it never seems to amaze me when I see people kind of following the line of the crowd, and I instantly, it's like they they morph into sheep, and I'm just watching them just on this conveyor belt almost where everybody seems to just follow the rules all of the time. And I want to preface this by saying, I'm not saying that I condone illegal activity and that will be important with what I'm about to say after this. But when something is more of an inconvenience and something is maybe bending the rules a little bit, but still makes most sense for you, then I don't think that all of the rules should always apply to you all of the time. And I'm going to give you an example. And again, I don't condone illegal activity. However, this is really a good example of what what I'm talking about. And inside of our police, fire, military, and families Facebook group, somebody had commented to one of my questions, and I'm just going to read it here. And it says, Ashley Walton, may I throw a monkey wrench into the argument? In 2012, my wife and I made plans to hang out at her friend's house to play cards and to drink We packed a bag so that we wouldn't be drinking and driving. My son called me about five beers in, distraught, and said that he was going to kill himself. I asked him to meet me, and I jumped in the car, and I passed an officer going 110 miles an hour. I never took the foot off of the gas, and when he caught me nine miles later, as soon as he turned on the lights, I pulled over, and I explained to him in a very distressed way why. He gave me the breathalyzer. I was .08. He was pissed, but he radioed to the New York PD and they found my son where he said that he would be from that point and he was very compassionate. I still got arrested. Now, this is one of those situations where I think I would say any good father would have responded in this same exact way. And it it made me think about all of the times that I too have broken the rules because It was most applicable to me in that time and how few people I see actually doing that. Now, would a better call to action have been to just call the New York PD in the first place? Absolutely. But in that state of mind, when you think that your child is about to kill themselves, I think that all bets are off in the eyes of most parents. And in my opinion, I think that we need to start having discussions about not only when the rules don't apply to us, but how many rules are just blatantly just dumb and they don't, they don't make any sense in terms of applicability? It's more of a convenience or a power hold for a lot of people. And I'm not talking about the drinking and driving situation. I'm talking about as we live our daily lives. Yeah. that And, you know, when you first brought up this topic, I was thinking about, you know, in our daily life. And it's not really a rule, but say you're walking in a mall and you see the crowd of people Typically, if you're walking one way, you walk on the right. If you're walking the opposite way, you walk on the left. And and it's kind of that same concept where traditionally for us, we go to the other side and walk against the flow of, of people because it's just normally it's emptier. It's not we're not following that line. And there's there has to be a point in time where you determine, OK, is this okay for me to violate this law or to, to it's, it's that cost versus reward type thing. Yeah. I'm not saying violate the law in terms of like, I want you to go and get yourself arrested, but small things like that, like the, the rule I think would be the better way of saying it, not yeah, the law. Yeah. Because another example would be when you're parking and I just so happen to have like one of the smallest cars, not like a dumb small car, but, um, it, like the the arrows in a parking lot, for example, if I know that I'm going to be, well, first of all, I'm parking way out in the middle of nowhere anyways, because I don't want somebody parking next to my very nice car. But if the arrow's pointing one way, that doesn't mean that it's impossible for me to go the opposite way that it's pointing and then park where I want to park, you know? And so those are the types of things that I'm talking about. There was another situation where we went fishing. I think I've mentioned this before, and it was in an incredibly busy area on a port by like a fish market. 
And it was literally impossible to park. We were spending way too long trying to look for somewhere to park. And it was one of those situations where you're not allowed to go left, but because everybody is coming out that way. And there is a spot right there. And Clint has, I've never heard my husband tell a lie, not a single lie, not a white lie, never once in our nearly 15 years of marriage. And with that also comes the fact that he is not somebody who likes to break the rules, not even (laughs) the small ones. So we talked about rules versus laws. Like, absolutely, he wouldn't break the laws. But in terms of the rules, he it's painstaking for him to break the rules. It makes my stomach twist thinking about it, honestly. So there's no cars coming. There's a spot right there. And if a car does come, then they're going to take it. And it's already been 30 minutes at that point. So I'm like basically yelling at him to just pull in the way he's not supposed to, to be able to take the spot. And despite how painstaking it was, you finally did it and made everybody else in the truck incredibly happy. <laughs> well, and it's, it kind of comes down to, it, it's it, what I thought of as, you know, when you're getting on a plane, they call the group you're in and Ashley always wants to go with the first group. And for me, I'm, I'm not in any hurry. Like, it's not like we have only limited space to store our luggage overhead. Cause normally we just check our stuff and sh- she always makes us go in the first group, even though we're in the second or third group. And and I just do it and I just say, okay, <laughs> and, and we go along with it. So here's another thing too that I think makes bending the rules a little bit easier. When you're personable and you're a very social person and you've learned how to smile at people, for example, it makes bending the rules a little bit easier. And another thing that I think goes in tandem with this conversation is not only bending the rules, but also being the person to ask for something, right? Whether you're at the airport and you're asking if there's a a better seat. Clint recently had to go out um, flying to another state And I remember you were getting to the airport and you had so much time and you were in a seat that was the worst last seat possible when we had to book the flight last minute. And I told you when you get to the airport and you check in, like go up to the stewardess or whoever's at the desk and then ask them, like, is there a better seat? Because, you know, you're a tall, big guy and it was only uh, like a middle seat. And so you spoke up, you asked and then you got what you asked for. And I think a lot of people are afraid to do that. Yeah. And it's funny because even the lady I spoke with, I, I felt weird and I'm like, man, I should start asking for stuff like this more. And I should have asked for more because she was dumbfounded. That's all I was asking for. I mean, I was the first person there for that flight and she was, she's like, uh, you just want an aisle seat? I'm like, yeah, is that possible? Um, she'll all see what I can do, but I just want, you just want to be put on the list for an aisle seat and I'm like, yeah. So then I started thinking about, I'm like, should I ask for an upgrade to like first class or something? Like it was, it caught me off guard. Yeah. And so those are, those are the types of things that I'm talking about. Like, and Clint, you're such a friendly guy anyways. So like, it doesn't surprise me that that was her response to, um, of course I would have been like, well, if you have something better, (laughs) but when, When we speak up and we know that it's okay for not all the rules to apply, just because you booked a flight and that was your assigned seat doesn't mean that it has to be that way. And so when you know that you're allowed to bend the rules, not everything will always apply to you. You have the charisma, the charm, and then you're you're genuine in it, right? You're not being devious when it comes to asking for certain things. And then you're respectful and appreciative of it. Then it, it makes her happy to be able to grant you that aisle seat versus you having to sit in the middle seat. And then it also gives you exactly what you asked for, which, you know, everybody wins. Yeah. And, and it's, that's something I learned and, and it's, it's getting out of my own comfort zone with that approach to it. And, and I think that's something that we all can take away from this is something, get out of your comfort zone and, ask if you, I mean, when Gretzky has that saying, you'll miss a thousand shots that you don't take, or you'll miss every shot that you don't take. And it's something that I, I live by. Yeah. And I also am thinking about how many times I've been at the grocery store and there's like 10 people in that one checkout lane. And then all of a sudden you see a new lane open and maybe one person gravitates over there. 
maybe it's the person that was grabbed to go over there. But then all nine people still stay in that same long line and nobody seems to budge to get into that other new line. If I'm the back in the back of the line, I will be the first person to go over there and to get into that new line. Like that's just kind of how it works, right? It's when, I mean, if somebody was in front of me and then they asked to go in front of me, then I would let them because that's just being respectful. But those are the types of things that I think we all need to rethink within our own lives to see how many things are just a nuisance that don't necessarily have to apply to us within the realm of the law. Mm-hmm. I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. We're going to go rein in our puppy who's currently chewing on a wooden table. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.